this is second time that I had been celebrating the Holy Mass on Saturday evening. I think the other one, first one, a couple of years ago. So anyway, I'm so glad to be here and to celebrate, worship the Lord, the living and loving God, with you, God's family, faith family, church family. Yes, that's a great blessing. I'm a resident here. I'm a veteran uh, chaplain, Catholic priest chaplain. So I am here. I'm staying here. Thank God for this great uh, welcome that Father Angelo, all the priests, and all you faith family offers to me. And uh, one of our friends here, he used to say, we love our priests. That's kind of extremely uh, enjoyable or a blessing word. We love our priests. So I enjoy that, and I experience that with you in this parish community. The word of God today, the gospel reminds us a powerful message. Can a blind man Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? So that's an important, very relevant, very specifically relevant message today. And it, it, it reminds us we need to be open-minded. We should have an open eye that can understand, that can see maybe 360 degrees, the holistic truth, truth in its all its perspective. And who has got that perfect vision, perfect eye? When I was a kid, I remember that picture, maybe in the early 60s. I think it was from the old catechism book. So there was a picture of triangle at least I remember that picture. I, I can't remember the explanation. But this is what I understand. It, was, it is about a triune God, a triangle, with all kind of radiant rays around it. And there's a big eye, eye in the center. And that is supposed to be the eye of God, all seeing, all viewing, all knowing. Yes. So I humbly believe we humans are blind. We are, we have blind spots. We know only certain relative truth, realities. We don't know all the realities, all truth. And we become blindfolded many times. We become one-sided. We become partial. God alone knows everything. So I humbly believe we have to have the eyes of Jesus Christ. It is not the direct biological eyes. It is there. Jesus himself, he restored eye, sight and vision to blind people in different occasions and also different ways. I remember one occasion when Jesus restored I cite to him, it didn't happen right away, instantaneously. In the first stage, his eyes were open. He could see, but he could see, the, he could see human beings, not as human beings. He was looking, he was seeing like trees or animals, something like that. That's kind of very indicative. There are people like that. They don't see human beings with God-given respect and identity, name and identity and dignity and all that. They see them like human, not human beings who are created in the image and likeness of God. They are treated like animals or, or slaves. It has happened in history. It has happened in our own lives too. Yes, in our own families, relationships. We don't see them a spouse or partner, God-given match. We see them enemies and we hate them and we treat them badly. Yes, so we need right vision, true vision. What is that we call 2020 vision? Maybe it is 
human way of saying or biological view of real sight, good sight and all that. But I humbly believe we should share the divine vision, the divine eyes, as I mentioned, that triangle, that single eye, all-knowing, all-seeing, radiant, bright eye, which is supposed to be the eye of God, the first eye, the best eye, the creator's eye, which will never miss anything at all, which can see everything, know everything. So I humbly believe we have to share the eye of Jesus Christ, the eye of God, the vision of Christ, the vision of God. If we can hold fast to that vision of Christ, perspective of Christ, the vision of God, things would be better off. Now these days, we are in the middle of all this kind of extremely frustrating situations. There are leaders, politicians in the world, those who want to live in the past, in the Cold War age, World War II age, and all those kind of immediate years. Things have changed. Some of the leaders, they come from KGB background, and they are influenced by, influenced by this kind of Stalinism, Leninism, killing all those people, those who disagree with their policies or plans. So they want to come in power, and they are in power, at least in my humble knowledge, for the last almost two decades, twice a president, and to, then, of course, they cannot continue as president, so they make arrangement. It's kind of devil's conspiracy, devil's thinking, devil's view of things. So they becomes, he becomes like prime minister twice, two terms. Then, of course, they, he does everything. I do, I do it, did everything, vice versa. And now they are engaged in this war, brutal war, innocent people being killed. So it's kind of wrong idea, wrong vision, wrong views, perspectives. It has happened in our country too. And I can't, I can't forget, I cannot but tell you that one of the best things that happened in the late 80s, I remember I was a young priest back home in India, that bishop, a professor of philosophy and theology in, in Poland somewhere, he was chosen to be the Pope of the, the Catholic Church, Pope John Paul II. He assumed that name. Coming from that communist dictatorship, all this kind of terrible situation when he was growing up, he knew the terrible situation in his own life experience. And he was sent to labor camp. He lost his mother. He knew the miserableness of that kind of situation. And he tried the best, his best when he became the Pope. And people listened to him. He became quickly the world leader. And he stood up for human freedom, human dignity. And of course it happened by the year 1990. I remember exactly the fall of the Berlin Wall, German Wall, dividing the two countries, brothers and sisters, fellow men and women. They were sharing the same heritage, same nationality and everything. They were separated, divided by this kind of ism, terrible ism, politics, all this kind of cruel and terrible isms and rule and all that. And of course fell down. I remember even ladies there in Germany, in that part of the world, taking pieces of this fallen wall, the Berlin Wall, the dividing wall. They put this kind of earring. And I remember that pictures. Yes, it was an enjoyable thing for the whole world. And Germany became one. Now, after all these years now, by the year 2022, now, these leaders, these biased or, or ill-devised with this wrong eye, bad eye, this kind of mistaken views and perspective. They are trying to bring back that, that old political system, Russian system, Russian rule and all this kind of thing. And of course the, the expense, the price would be terrible. It can happen. I remember in our country, 
By that time, Pope John Paul was sick, and he was almost really, really sick. When he reminded the leaders in our country, in our country, by the year 2002 or 2003, don't go to wage war in the name of weapons of weapons of mass destruction. Yes, church has got very alive diplomatic relationship with all these countries. But nobody listened. I remember that, that time I was in Chicago. Yes, I remember. Nobody listened to this poor man, almost sick person, and we had all this war. It was since I came to Dayton after 2015, those leaders, they made the public confession. It was a wrong war. It was a wrong war. And it was a mistaken war. I remember some of those leaders, politicians, confessing that. But it was a big mistake. And of course, then we saw, we witnessed the rising of ISIS and all this kind of deadly, brutal, radical caliphate moment and all that. So it is, one war is begetting another war. Violence begetting violence. Bad eye, blind eye, leading to further disastrous, frustrating, miserable situation. So the Lord is reminding us, try to have a right eye, good eye. Try to share the eye of Jesus Christ, the best eye in human history, the eyes of God, the single eye of God. It's very symbolic. Then, of course, when we can, when we can share the eye of Jesus Christ, his views, his visions, his perspectives, his gospel of life and love and forgiveness, then everybody will have the right to coexist, to live. There won't be hell alive in, the, in our world, in our fragile world. And there would be human dignity and human right, and there would be democracy, better state of being. So we have to remove the wooden blocks wooden planks from our, our eyes. And we have to keep our eyes clean and clear. Let the eyes of views and vision of Jesus Christ, the vision of Jesus Christ prevail in us, that will lead and guide us, that will direct us. Yes, I have seen many times when there is severe rain, of course, and especially in the highways, when we go through nearby this truck and all that, 18 relators and all that. This water would be sp splashed in our windshield. And suddenly we, I feel like, we feel like, almost like terrified. It's very kind of shocking moment. Yes, it can happen in our life. So we should always keep praying for the eyes of God, for the view and right view and vision of God. Then of course, God will deliver us from all this blind spot, from the darkness, pitch darkness. Right at this moment, it is not that evening late now, if when we turn off all the lights, it would be darkness. A few times I had to come back looking for some book or some other things from the sacristy. I have to light my cell phone light flashlight there. Yes. It would be pitch darkness. When God is not there, when Jesus is not there, his words, his wisdom, his, his visions is not leading and guiding us. There is darkness. The rule of devil and evil demon would be happening there and would be falling down or would be, would be, we would be in accident, endangering ourselves. So we need the eyes, the light, the illumination, the divine vision, divine perspectives to rule and guide us. Especially these days, Archbishop has asked us to pray, and Pope Francis is asking prayer, and these coming days, in a special way to pray for deliverance from all this evil, ugly war and violence, and all this kind of going back to the past. It is not going to happen. We cannot live in the past. They are trying to go back into the Cold War time, World War time, exercising all kinds of political dictatorship. That is terrible. It is devil's rule. It is devil's reign. So we need deliverance. Let all our eyes be shining and be open. Let the eyes of our heart and soul 
the eyes of Jesus Christ and God rule and guide us, save us, deliver us, Lord, intervene in our lives, give us the illumination, the light, the fullness of truth, the fullness of God's wisdom. Amen.